of my drawing a cylinder. Okay, there's our cylinder here. Now, if we draw in a coordinate act system, so we'll make this up the middle, we'll call that Z. Okay, and we'll call that X, and we'll call that Y. Okay, so that's going to be a value of Z x and y and our coordinate our cylindrical coordinates we know that with the, we call this value r then r will sweep out a circle theta okay so we're going to have r theta we're going to have r we're going to have theta and we're going to have a value z which is a height so if we were to take that Okay, that's a value of theta. Quite small there, but okay. That's a value of theta. Now we can look at it and we can say that uh, x equals r cos theta. So that distance there, okay, if we drop that perpendicular, that distance there, uh, x upon r is cos theta, x equals r cos theta. And this distance here would be y equals r sine theta, and the height there, z, would be just a value of z. Now, if I was to take this, take a sheet of A4, and I was to draw some random line on it, and then take that sheet and fold it round into a cylinder then that straight line would create a curve. Now that curve is the geodesic, and we're looking at that curve on this cylinder. So you could imagine, now this is just looking at it a um, bit of common sense, we could draw the line okay, that we're interested in. So let's say a curve. So that's a curve, okay. So if that was unfolded that curve would actually be a straight line. So we've got that curve there and we can split that curve into a height element which is the height z but we can cut break it into another element here which is our value of our r d theta which is the amount that it curves around here okay so that's just a curve around there. Okay so we're now split that into this little triangle and we can see in that little triangle we could see that if we draw we'll pop it up here can you see it no put it down here we can see that ds squared equals ex squared plus dy squared plus dz squared now we've got to find out what these things are, dx squared, dy squared, dz squared. So we can find it out from here. Okay, so we can differentiate this here. So that's just going to be, um, we could say, so we'll be doing dx by d theta. Okay, but we'll take the d theta up. Okay, so we just end up with a differential dx. So dx would equal minus r uh, sine theta d theta okay and dy is going to equal r cos theta d theta and our dz well that's just the height it's still going to be dz okay so now we could come up with an intuitive description of what ds is, and we will do that in a minute, but we'll just quickly go through the, the derivation using the, the maths, okay? Um, so we could write that as ds squared equals dx squared, well that's dx there, so it's going to be minus r 
sin theta d theta squared plus r cos theta d theta, so that's just the, the dy squared plus a value of dz squared. Okay, uh, so that's going to equal, put that a bit more space over there. Um, r squared sine squared theta and theta squared plus r squared cos squared theta d theta squared plus dz squared and if we take out our r squared d theta squared we'll end up with our sine squared plus cos squared and that's theta theta plus dz squared dz squared so that equals so that's just one so you end up with r squared d theta squared plus dz squared okay so that's what our value for our ds squared is now you can work that out actually just by looking at the curve itself okay i'll just do a box around that okay you, you could, could work that out because you know that the value here is the distance round in an arc. Now the distance round in an arc is going to be, as of our last video, it's going to be r d theta. Okay, so we can say straight away that our distance there is r d theta. You know that's dz. So you can say that ds squared is r squared d theta squared plus dz squared. Okay, so it's it's intuitively obvious, but there's a little bit of maths there that proves that it is the case. Okay, so now we have our value for our ds squared. Now we can now do a little bit of the calculus of variations. We could take that and say ds squared by theta squared would be r squared plus dz by d theta all squared we can take our d theta squared up and we can find the square root and we were left with our ds equals r squared plus and I'll just write that as z derivative squared z derivative squared all to the power of a half by d theta. Okay, now that's our value we're looking for for our ds. So we could write our function all out now. We could write i equals some integral from a to b. Now what we've got here is a function. Now I like to write it down here so as you I don't forget exactly where I'm working from. That is an independent variable. So it's a function with an independent variable theta, okay, and we have a value here which is our z derivative of theta. So there's an explicit dependence of f on z derivative of theta. Okay. 
but there's no explicit dependence on the Z or theta. Well, that's by V theta. So that means that because there's no explicit dependence on the Z of theta, we can write a simplified version of the Euler Lagrange. We prove partial F by partial Z derivative equals some constant. So that means we've got to differentiate that with respect to Z derivative. So we have partial by partial Z derivative of R squared plus Z derivative squared power of a half. Okay, and again that was going to give us when we take our half down, and it'd be to the power of minus a half, and then we could differentiate in there was two Z derivative, and the two and the half will cancel out, so we end up with Z derivative upon R squared plus Z derivative squared to the power of a half equals some constant. Okay, now what we're going to do is, as of previous videos, we're going to solve for Z derivative. So we can take this here up and multiply it by C. We can square this side and square that side, which will get rid of the power of a half. And then we can take our z derivative back over to this side and we can gather the like terms of z derivative. Okay, now you can just go ahead and, and do that yourself. I don't want to go through and write all that out. Um, it just clutters up and takes away from the, the flow of what I'm, what I'm showing you. Okay, so we could just write down um, solve for z, solve for z derivative. Now when I solve that for z derivative, we end up with z derivative. And don't take my word for it, go down and go try it yourself. z derivative equals c squared r squared upon 1 minus c squared. Okay, now these are all constants, okay? So what we can do is we can say z derivative is some constant. So we could give that constant now our, a value, we could call it m, so we could say z derivative equals, now we'll just, should actually just put that up here. That's a constant, okay, so we'll just say z derivative equals some constant m, okay. So that means that whenever you integrate that, you're going to end up with z is some value m of theta plus v. Okay, now that there is the equation of a helix. Equation of a helix, which is what we're looking to find. So in effect, it's the equation of a straight line. You, you recognise it as mx plus b. Okay, but that's the equation of a straight line in a cylindrical space. Okay, so thank you for listening. Um, the next video I'll go on. I'll do an extension to that, which would be will be the geodesic on a sphere. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.